name is Vivian Lee. I'm thrilled to be your moderator. And the reason that we are here is to celebrate Women Creating Changes Report, a blueprint for women's civic engagement in New York City toward a more just and equitable democracy, which examines barriers to civic engagement that many women face. I think one of the things the report does is really expand the definition of what civic engagement is. So we're really looking at all the different entry points that people can have into engagement and um, and really with, um, you know, beginning from volunteering all the way over to like being a public servant. Some of the other uh, items that have been mentioned uh, in this report that help to define civic engagement include completing the census, protest, serving on a board, testifying before a government body, voting in municipal, state and federal elections, working in public service, signing a petition, as well as running for office. But then there are things such as just contacting an elected official, whether you're a citizen or not. I think these are some of the things when you see it laid out uh, in a chart, it starts to open up exactly what is possible. And what is possible, of course, clearly comes down to what you have bandwidth for. A lot of women and women of color are heads of households or tend to, according to this report, be uh, the one who is relied upon for having either the most consistent income or the largest income in the household. And this can often cut short a woman's ability to gain a foothold in the civic engagement process. The areas that we need to address to make civic engagement more palatable uh, for women, particularly women from marginalized communities, are the very same barriers that prevent women from marginalized communities from taking advantage of other elements uh, of the body politic. Child care is always an issue. Health care and adequacy of health care is always an issue that also detracts from our ability to engage civically. Um, the inability to take advantage of many of the programs and the courses and the organized meetings that take place. So all of the barriers that exist in our country generally also are replicated within our access to the civic space or our lack of access to that space. I want to define power as not power over, but power with. Civic engagement is about power with, you know, for the purposes of our lives, for the interests of communities. We have been very concerned at the New York Women's Foundation with preserving democracy. But let me just say, I think that our optics needs to be expanding democracy, not preserving the current practice. Of course, you preserve them, but you expand. The report actually goes through um, more than a dozen ways that government and nonprofits and uh, community-based organizations can all chip in to make this happen. There's a digital divide, right? And that's another systemic barrier that I think government can help address is ac increase access to technology. We have to provide as many educational opportunities as possible. Organizations like Generation Citizen that is doing this work uh, in the schools have to be matched by those of us who are targeting communities writ large so that we are providing every opportunity that we can to make sure that people are empowered. There's a need for us to really shift the way we think about needs and addressing people's needs because I think a lot of the work happens with this idea that we're going to do for people and rather than doing with people and being led by people. If we can shift our lens on needs, we would put the people who um, are in the greatest need at the center of the conversation and to have that the funding decisions and the policy decisions be led by them. I will also add this, we've got to make it popular to speak in terms of equity, not equality. We have often shied away from equity discussions because equity is very uncomfortable because then we have to really get into the weeds of how the things became the things. But we are not served with an equality conversation when we are confronting a rise in white nationalism, when it is equity that is going to determine the ultimate success and health of our overall communities. I think the responsibility is mutual, right? There's a responsibility of government to the communities and then there's the responsibility that people have as for you know as community members to hold government officials accountable and i think it's it's a two way uh, conversation ongoing eternal vigilance and a sense of responsibility that we're all here to take care of one another um, is really what i would like to see happen more and more people are hungry for the information and it's really there's not much vacillation when people get the information to action